Shear is, if you guys are wondering what the difference is in those two names, a shear is a scissor where the length of the blade is over six and a half inches, a scissor, uh, they're six and a half inches or less. The average price that people pay for their shears in the salons, they range from $100 to $150. I've seen these things in hair shows for like $1,000. You got to take care of your shears if you're pay paying any, anywhere that kind of, that, anywhere that, uh, that level of money. So there's a couple things you can do that make them last longer and work better. One is during haircuts, when you set these down, never set them down with the blades open like this on your hard countertops. When you do that, you get these little nicks and chips in the edges of the blades. The, the hair gets in there. It causes it to fold over. That's why they have to be sharpened. Whenever you set these down, close the blades. Put them on a towel, a paper towel, something soft. You won't have to sharpen them as much. The rule of thumb to follow, the less you sharpen your shears, the longer they last you. The other thing is when they stop cutting hair, this is how you check to see if they need sharpening. Open the blades, take the edge or the back of your thumbnail, set it on the back of the blade, gently rub it to the front. When you rub your thumbnail to the front of the blade, if you feel a little nick or chip, if it's there, you're going to feel it, that means the blades need sharpening. A lot of times when you check the blades, they're smooth, you don't feel anything, but your scissor keeps pushing the hair, it doesn't cut the hair for you. What's happened there, more than likely, the blades are too loose, they need to be readjusted. So this is how you check to see if your shears are adjusted properly. Hold them level like this, lift up the ring finger and let it drop. If they just flop down without any resistance, the blades are too loose. All you have to do is take the dial, if it's a screw, you need a screwdriver, turn it to the right so when you lift up the ring finger, it will stay up by itself, just a slight touch down. Always check that first when your scissor stops cutting hair. More than likely, that's all it is. They just need to be readjusted. And always remember, the blades are going to work better. I don't know why this is. I don't know where you get a scissor. If you do most of your hair cutting from the top inch and above. If you do all your hair cutting down where the screw or dial is, they just don't seem to work as well. So, um, you know, it's just I think it's just the way they're designed. These are real pretty. My wife says this stuff is jewelry. They're not. They're scissors. What makes these pretty is something called titanium. What titanium is on a scissor, it's an ultra-fine aluminum-like alloy that some of the scissor manufacturers use to coat the steel. So when you get a titanium scissor, you're getting something that's never going to rust on you, and that's good. But the reason why I'm making a big deal of this, you're going to see these in the hair shows, websites. Some of the vendors that sell titanium scissors will make the claim, because they're titanium, you never have to sharpen them, don't have to sharpen them as much. That's not true. There is no such thing as scissors that never need sharpening. You cut 10 heads of hair a day, cut a lot of dry, dirty hair, you got to sharpen the blades. You can't get around that. I'll pass a couple of these out, girls. You can try them, cut each other's hair, go for it. I don't care. These are examples of uh, titanium. So if you want to, uh, you're going to go. spend over $100 for a pair of shears. You're not familiar with the brand of shear the vendor is selling. You need to ask them a couple questions to help to protect yourself. First question you want to ask a vendor, what country is the steel from they use to make the scissor you're looking at? And the second question you want to ask a vendor, what's the heating grade that's used on that steel? If they tell you the steel comes from Japan or Germany and has at least a 440 heating grade to the steel, A, B, or C, C being the best, you're going to get your money's worth for the $100 to $150 price or so. It goes up in price a little bit. You may have seen these words before, V-Steel, Cobalt, Hitachi Steel. Those are just upgrades to the base 440 steel. The point is, when steel comes out of the ground, they melt everything out of it. What they mix back into it, it's called the HRC. That's in your textbooks. It determines the hardness of the steel. Well, 440 steel, V-steel, cobalt, the hardness on all those scissors, the hardness on the steel, ranges from 59 to 63. What I'm trying to emphasize here, these are all in the same area, the same ballpark. Difference in price, but the hardness of the steel is pretty close. The problem is, if you get a 330 heating grade steel scissor, that steel mostly comes from China, India, Pakistan, another one of those countries. But the hardest on that steel, look at that, it's 53 to 54. There's a huge gap here between these two groups of numbers. Now, here's the real problem. I want to pass this scissor out to you. I did this last time. It has the black dial on it. This is a Japanese steel scissor. This is a 440C heating grade. If you cut 10 heads of hair a day with a scissor every day, you got to sharpen it every few weeks. The problem is after four or five sharpenings, the sharpeners couldn't, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I mixed them up, I'm, I'm going too fast here, sorry. 
This is the 440 steel. This is the 330 steel. You can buy 330 steel and the beauty supplies for about $30 or so. You cut 10 heads of hair a day with a 330 steel scissor. You're going to have to sharpen it every three or four weeks. After three, four sharpenings, depending on how good the sharpener is, you can't, you, you got to throw it out and buy a new one. Versus a 440 steel, you cut 10 heads of hair a day. As long as you take care of it, like we talked about, you shouldn't have to sharpen it once, maybe twice a year. The point I'm making here, I want to pass both of these out to you. Put them both in your hand. Open them, close them, feel them. You're going to see, at least in my opinion, it's hard to tell the difference between these two scissors because they're not regulated. They do not go through the FDA. I said this last time I was here. Most scissors, most um, products, your, your, all your hair products, your nail products, they all go through the FDA. These don't. These guys in these shows can take a $20 scissor and mix them in, you know, with like a $200 scissor. So before you buy a scissor, ask the vendor, what country is the steel from? What's the heating rate of the steel? You want to try and get that 440 steel or above if you can. Ergonomics. Um, when you're trying to figure out what scissor is good for your hand, this might help you. The first thing you want to look at in any scissor is the handle. This piece of metal that attaches the blades to the thumb, it's called a shank, funny name. If it attaches, excuse me, below the thumb like this scissor, you put your ring finger, your thumb in, your wrist will always stay up when you're doing a haircut. If you get a scissor where that shank will attach now to the middle of the thumb, like this one, you put your ring finger, your thumb in, your wrist can go up or down. Or if it attaches to the top of the thumb, like this one, goes right to the very top of the thumb, you put your ring finger, your thumb in, your wrist should stay completely down in its most relaxing position. If you're having some issues at school, you may want to consider either the black, not these particular ones, but black, this, the black scissor and the gold scissor. These are called crane handles. These are designed for people to help you a little bit if you're having some wrist problems. It makes it a little easier. So I want to pass all three of these out together. If you're having wrist issues here at school, look at the purple scissor closely. That's the handle you want to stay away from. So I'll pass this out so you guys can get a feel for that. Then you can consider swivel thumb scissors. Now swivel thumbs were designed for people, if you, if you want to try and prevent carpal tunnel, this is where the thumb turns for you. The advantage to a swivel thumb, you're doing a horizontal, a vertical cut. On a regular scissor, this is the only way you can hold it. Your wrist is bent, your elbow's up. With a swivel thumb, it allows you to bring your wrist flat, your elbow completely down. You're cutting around the ear on a client, your wrist is going to be bent. With a swivel thumb, you can keep your wrist flat, much more relaxing. To try these, because you have to get used to them. Hold the scissor upside down, turn your wrist, and just move your thumb up and down like you're shaking somebody's hand. So go ahead and try that. Don't shake your hand. <laughs> and then you can get a double swivel. This is where the thumb turns in two different directions, north and south, east and west. The advantage to a double swivel, the thumb movement is next to nothing. Very, very little thumb movement. These are designed for people with carpal tunnel. If you have carpal tunnel, that means every time you move your thumb, it hurts. With a, with a double swivel, it minimizes the thumb movement. It's much less thumb movement. These you got to get used to. There's a learning curve on those. And then you can get a three-hole scissor, or now a two-and-a-half-hole scissor. These will aid you in the zero-degree cutting. Zero-degree cutting with a two-hole scissor, the blades tend to point down. The three-hole, I put my middle finger in here. You always maintain a zero-degree cut. And now it comes in two-and-a-half-hole. It's like a convertible. So these are really uh, very good for zero-degree cutting. And then this, I didn't have this last time. These are really nice. These are by Sokoto. It's a three-hole double swivel. Very, very comfortable. Super, super lightweight. You'll notice this um, when you get it in your hand. I don't know why this is, but a three-hole double swivel is easier to get used to than a two-hole double swivel. I'm not sure why. And if you cut a lot of dry hair, you guys, you want to look for scissors where the blades are very thick in the center and then they just slightly taper down. These are designed for dry hair cutting. Helps you with dry hair cutting. And the sets, I've got to put the sets out here. The sets are, are, are great. Um, I'm not a big advocate of the sets, but um, you, you need to know this. When you're buying a set that has a matching thinning share, you need to know how many teeth are on the thinning share because the rule of thumb is the more teeth on a thinning share, the less hair it removes. Thinning shares today are classified from carrying anywhere from 30, or uh, from, excuse me, 24. To 43 teeth. So if your thinner has 43 teeth in it and you want to thin hair, it's barely going to blend the hair for you. The average thinning share carries between 30 and 35 teeth. If you can stay in that range, it pretty much covers the gamut 
when it comes to thinning hair. I'm not sure how much thinning you guys are doing now, but you will be doing that in the salon. You have to thin the hair. The other thing is, what's the difference? I think I said this last time. What's the difference between these two thinning shares? I know in the back it's hard to see this. No, it's double. Double. Yeah. The teeth are on both sides on this one, one okay. side on this one. This is the one that's probably in your kits. Teeth are on one side, uh, the, the straight blades on the other. When you thin hair with this type of thinner, they always leave lines. You've got to go back over the lines to try and soften, point cut them out. If you can get a thinning shear where the teeth are on both sides like this, they do not leave lines. We've had these tested over and over again. The reason that's significant, you're cutting 10 heads of hair a day, and you've got to spend an extra five minutes on each haircut trying to thin out the lines when you're thinning the hair or to point cut them out, it slows the haircuts down. This does not do that. I'm not sure why this is. They're hard to find. Not many companies make these, and I just don't know why that is. But um, they're just they're difficult to find. Any questions before we finish? I mean, you guys are on past your break time. Okay, last thing I want to show you, especially you guys that haven't seen this before, measuring these to your hands. This is important. Two ways to do this. If you're using your ring finger, when you slide it in, it shouldn't go past your second knuckle. When you put your thumb in, it should go right to the tip of the thumb, no further than the first knuckle. Girls, I'm watching some of you guys like last time, putting your fingers in these things. They're going all the way down here. Okay, That's okay cutting just a couple of heads of hair a day. But when you start to cut a lot of hair, you can't control your scissor like this. What people do in the shops, they take their fingers and they curl or they claw them, and they cut like this all day long. When you do that, there's a tendon. It's right below the second knuckle on my thumb right here. That tendon starts getting overworked. When that happens, you start feeling pain in your wrist. That carpal tunnel forms in two spots. It forms right here and right here. Those are the two spots. So whenever you're holding your shear, make sure, this is important, guys, you want to see this. Make sure your ring finger and your thumb are parallel straight across, not like this, 